Hello, everyone. My name is Angela, and I work in the beautiful Lorraine and Earl Burns Miller Special Collections Room at the Billie Jean King Main Library in our Long Beach Public Library system. I'm here today to introduce you to a really great book that you should add to your summer reading list, especially as the theme for our summer reading program is Dig Deeper. And this book definitely digs down into a number of fascinating topics in history, archaeology, science and engineering, and so much more. Interestingly, this story also relates to our local and California history. In the Miller Room, in addition to focusing on the study of the arts and performing arts, especially Asian arts and culture, we also focus on local history, specifically in Long Beach, though larger topics and events in California history are also of interest, especially when they play a part in the settlement and development of our local and regional history in this area of Southern California. So without further ado, let's get this show on the road and dig deeper into one of the most memorable and absorbing nonfiction books I've ever read, and one I heartily recommend, entitled Ship of Gold in the Deep Blue Sea, The History and Discovery of the World's Richest Shipwreck by Gary Kinder. The author of this book, Gary Kinder, began his research for Ship of Gold in 1987. He was aboard the research vessel Arctic Discoverer in 1989 when Tommy Thompson, the central figure that this story is based around, announced his tremendous ship of gold shipwreck discovery to the public. He finally finished the research and writing for the book about 10 years later, and it was published in 1998. It immediately became a national bestseller. This book begins with a major historical event that very quickly helped launch California into becoming our 31st state, namely the discovery of gold at Sutter's Mill in 1848 near present-day Sacramento in Northern California. This quickly led to the California Gold Rush, bringing an estimated 300,000 people or more to the state from around the U.S. and the world. Many places around California, including this area that eventually became Long Beach, were settled and developed in part due to the population boom and wealth arising out of the gold rush. This increase in population and wealth from the gold rush also led to enhancements in transportation routes between California and the East Coast. And in 1855, after the Panama Railway was completed, which crossed the Isthmus of Panama, steamship companies began running consistent service between San Francisco to Panama. Passengers, mail, and goods from California would be offloaded in Panama on the Pacific side, journey by train across the Isthmus, and then board steamships on the Atlantic side for transport up to the eastern coast of the U.S. And that's where this story really begins, with a group of people who leave California in 1857 aboard a steamship to Panama, where they crossed the isthmus and boarded a 280-foot side-wheel steamship called the SS Central America, bound for New York City. Though they eventually find that things take a drastically different turn than they expected. In addition to passengers and mail, the ship was heavily laden with about 20 tons of California gold. Though accounts as to the actual number of tons vary, it took the form of coins, gold dust, nuggets, bars, and more. And some of it was also intended as a much needed shipment to banks in New York to help support the national economy. When the vessel encounters a terrifying storm off the Carolinas in September of 1857, the author vividly reconstructs and recounts the hardship, heartache, and heroism of the ship's captain, William Lewis Herndon, his crew, and the passengers, and it's both fearful and fascinating as it unfolds. Ultimately, the ship was doomed. A New York newspaper from the time, Frank Leslie's Illustrated Newspaper, reported the last moments of the Central America. Suddenly, the ship, as if in an agony of death itself, made a plunge. Her interior gave one gigantic death rattle. The next instant disappeared, leaving human beings floating in darkness upon the fathomless ocean. It sank approximately 160 miles off the coast of South Carolina, and only 153 out of 578 people survived. Nearly 75% of the souls on board perished. This shipwreck is still considered to be one of the worst American peacetime disasters at sea. Furthermore, the accounts of the shipwreck retold by those who survived and the crew members of the vessels that rescued them made this tragedy one of the biggest news stories of the 19th century. 
Nevertheless, the gripping drama of this maritime tragedy, whose massive loss of gold also contributed to the national economic panic of 1857, merely sets the stage for perhaps an even more extraordinary maritime adventure, an interdisciplinary research project that begins nearly 130 years later. In the 1980s, a brilliant young mechanical engineer named Tommy Thompson, after graduating from The Ohio State University, began working as an engineer at the Tell Memorial Institute with an interest in deep ocean mining and engineering. He eventually learned about the sinking of the SS Central America and decided he wanted to find it. Not only to find the gold, but also because of his interest in developing technology for working on projects in deep ocean environments. Thompson organized a multidisciplinary crew of academics, scientists, historians, and adventurers to boldly undertake this elusive quest. They knew they were up against great odds, and it was unknown exactly where the ship went down. But in the 1,400 square mile deep sea environment where they believed it probably sank, they needed to be able to develop new technology, especially a remotely operated vehicle, to dive down to the wreck, explore it, and ultimately recover its treasures. Tommy Thompson and his team triumphed over great odds and achieved what many would have never thought possible by successfully adapting, utilizing, and inventing technology capable of finding and recovering objects in the deep ocean up to 8,000 feet deep, or a mile and a half down. Their work ultimately contributed to new technological advancements in the field of deep ocean engineering, as well as making many other historical, archaeological, and scientific discoveries along the way. Here's a brief video showing some of the early footage of work done on the Central America by the remotely operated vehicle they developed called Nemo. Arctic discoverer heading out to the deep blue sea. Nemo constructed in a garage by an unlikely young team of explorers and engineers. Here it is being launched to begin its hours long journey of almost 1.5 miles to the final resting point of the SS Central America. Pictured here is what became known as the Garden of Gold. Today it is valued at hundreds of millions of dollars. Nemo is blowing silt away as the team constructs a game plan to recover gold. That's amazing, Mike. Christine San Francisco minted Type 1 $20 Gold Liberty coins still remain stacked just like they were still inside the boxes used by the mint for delivery. The boxes degraded over the 140 years inside this amazing time capsule.
After the discovery, Thompson wrote a book called America's Lost Treasure, a pictorial chronicle of the sinking and recovery of the U.S. mail steamship, Central America, the Ship of Gold. People started coming out of the woodwork, wanting a piece of the pie, as one newscaster put it. Not only the investors, but also up to 39 insurance companies and other people. In 1996, after protracted legal battles, Thompson was finally awarded 92% of the treasure that he and his team had recovered. But even after Ship of Gold was published in 1998, the story still continued, eventually taking on a more shadowy dimension. Dramatic events continued to unfold with Tommy Thompson in the courts, in the news, and on TV up to at least the year 2018. This is a video from 2015, three years after he failed to show up for a court hearing, went on the run from the authorities, and was eventually caught. A fugitive treasure hunter is due this morning in federal court. Tommy Thompson found a shipwreck. It contained what is believed to be the largest collection of lost gold in American history. He was arrested Tuesday at a Florida hotel. 48 Hours correspondent Aaron Moretti shows us why Thompson was on the run for years. Aaron, good morning. Good morning. This is such an odd story because Thompson is said to be a brilliant engineer, but he's been the subject of an international manhunt ever since he vanished in 2012. He's in a bitter legal dispute with investors who say they haven't received a single cent from his very lucrative discovery. U.S. Marshals found Tommy Thompson and his reported girlfriend, Allison Antikire, hiding out at their suite in this Hilton Hotel in West Boca Raton. They did not resist arrest. Brian Baptist is a senior investigator for the U.S. Marshals. I had heard that they had been staying at the hotel for two years. They had been paying cash for all their stay and all, everything, basically. Thompson is wanted in Ohio for skipping out on a hearing in a lawsuit brought by his investors. Thompson had raised nearly $13 million from 161 people to find the wreckage of the SS Central America, also known as the Ship of Gold. It sank off the coast of South Carolina in 1857 during a hurricane. It's believed the ship was carrying as much as 21 tons of gold at the time. For treasure hunters, it is a coveted prize. Thompson, a pioneer of deep sea exploration techniques, discovered the wreck in 1988, about a mile and a half below the surface. Attorney Rick Robel once represented Thompson's company. Those of us who knew Tommy personally knew that the man lived like a pauper that he sacrificed himself and was the first explorer to achieve a, a working presence in the deep ocean. Thompson recovered about three tons of gold from the bottom of the Atlantic. He sold it in 2000 for $50 million, and Thompson's investors, which included the publishers of the Columbus Dispatch, got nothing. Robel says all the proceeds were used to pay the bills for the expense of expeditions and various lawsuits. Over $43 million in debt to one company, $4 or $5 million in debt to another company. The only charges facing Thompson and Anta Kyer are for failing to show up in court. They do not face any criminal charges stemming from the company's finances. I have no idea what happened to the gold. I'm sure a lot of people want to know that. Investor, uh, investors may still get a return. There may be as much as 18 tons of gold still in the wreckage. Thompson's company is in receivership, and there are still plans to go for the gold. On a slightly different note, there's actually an interesting connection between the ship of gold's treasure and Long Beach. Over the years, the gold from the Central America has continued to be marketed and exhibited for sale on the internet, at coin shows, and elsewhere. Approximately $40 million worth of SS Central America's gold was recently put on display to the public in 2018. The exhibit was called The Ship of Gold at the Long Beach Expo Coin and Collectibles Show at the Long Beach Convention Center. Perhaps it'll come back sometime soon to a future Long Beach Expo event. Finally, before we wrap up the topic of gold and shipwrecks, we do have some ships here in our local California waters that were also side wheel paddle steamers carrying passengers, mail, and gold during the gold rush era. Perhaps our most famous local ship of gold is the SS Winfield Scott, which rests just off the shoreline on the lee side of Middle Anacapa Island across the Santa Barbara Channel from Ventura and Santa Barbara. 
You can see its location marked by the red arrow in the map at the bottom of the screen here. Most of Winfield Scott's gold was recovered in salvage efforts after the ship sunk. And because the shipwreck is part of our Channel Islands National Park and National Marine Sanctuary, it's protected under federal law from anyone removing anything from the wreck site. Here's a video by NOAA's National Marine Sanctuary about the Winfield Scott to give you a little more information about its history. Off the coast of Southern California, Channel Islands National Marine Sanctuary protects habitats like lush kelp forests and mysterious sea caves. It also protects a collection of shipwrecks that tell stories of our maritime past and serve as habitats for creatures today. One of these wrecks is the Winfield Scott. Beginning in 1852, this sidewheel steamer traveled the Panama route, bringing gold prospectors from Panama to the gold fields of California. But on a foggy evening in 1853, Winfield Scott took a shortcut through the Santa Barbara Channel and steered directly into Middle Anacapa Island. Water began to rush in. The ship's 500 passengers were ferried to nearby West Anacapa Island, where they spent eight days before being rescued. Ultimately, everyone survived. Today, Winfield Scott rests on the seafloor within Channel Islands National Marine Sanctuary and Channel Islands National Park. Swimming through the shipwreck, it's easy to imagine the California Gold Rush history that brought so many seafarers through the area. To learn more about shipwrecks in Channel Islands National Marine Sanctuary, visit channelislands.noaa.gov forward slash maritime. You can learn more about this shipwreck and other local submerged cultural resources online via the Channel Islands National Park website or the Channel Islands National Marine Sanctuary website. You can also visit the Channel Islands National Park and National Marine Sanctuary to see some of these shipwrecks and islands up close and personal, whether diving or snorkeling, kayaking, boating, or just enjoying a hike around the islands that are open to the public. We also have other books and media in the library about shipwrecks you may want to check out, such as these right here. Great Shipwrecks of the Pacific Coast by Robert Bellick. Also Graveyard of the Atlantic, Shipwrecks of the North Carolina Coast by David Dick. And then History of Shipwrecks by Angus Constum. There's many more where that came from. Last but not least, you can also watch a very interesting book talk lecture given by the author, Gary Kinder, on C-SPAN 2 if you ever want to check it out on the internet. I've included the link here for you to write it down if you want to view it. In summary, Ship of Gold is a book that I repeatedly recommend to both men and women, specialists and non-specialists alike. I think it's one of the most well-written, imaginatively re envisioned and intriguing tales of historical research, scientific ingenuity, and inventiveness, and unyielding perseverance told in recent decades. It's still a relatively easy read for the layperson, despite some of the historical and scientific subject matter, and technical jargon is understandable and explained in a way that's interesting and well-defined. Finally, don't forget to check out Thompson's book, America's Lost Treasure, to see full-color photos of the entire project from beginning to end with tons of pictures of the stunning gold and fascinating artifacts recovered as well. This book will take you on an incredible adventure with an unforgettable story that you won't want to put down until it's done. So put these books on your list or reserve a copy at your local library. It's a solid gold adventure story and it's definitely worth a read. 
So with that, I just want to thank you for joining me this, for the Summer Reading Program Book Talk with the Miller Room. I also want to encourage you to sign up for our Summer Reading Program if you haven't done so already. Go online to longbeach.beanstack.org and register for our reading challenges. That way you can earn prizes and other fun stuff for the reading you're doing this summer. And if you've already signed up, enter the code SUMMER into the Activities tab of your reading challenge to be able to earn points for watching this video today. All right, so have fun con continuing to dive deeper into more summer reading books and topics like this one. Thanks again, and happy reading. Bye.